Hello everyone and welcome to this Stardust tutorial. So let's see what we are going to do. I went for a title sequence uh, style, but you can greatly use it for UI and tech things like this one. So I made this one for just uh, example sake. As you can see, it's a 3D brain with the revealed by the by the uh, this effect, this mask effect. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. You open After Effects, I assume of course you've got Stardust, go for a Full HD and 30 frames per second and 10 seconds duration. So let's create a background and let's create the Stardust layer. Okay, use Stardust and here we go. So at the beginning, of course, like any particle system, you've got nothing because they are not born yet. So just scroll like, let's go to five seconds, for example. Okay, so we ha we've got our particles emitted. Here in Stardust, you always have a panel that allows you to manage your effects with nodes. So with the nodal uh, links and stuff. Okay, now we have an emitter that is a point here in the center and particles that are emitted, of course. So for the type of emitter, we want uh, the particles to be emitted from a 3D model. So we'll use objects to display them. Here, when you select object, you've got object properties. Click on it and load your model, your 3D model. Okay, so now we've got a 3D model that's uh, the, where the particles are emitted from, but we don't see it at all. So for the, f the first thing we need to do is reduce the speed to zero so that they stay in place. You can kind of <laughs> kind of guess uh, there is a model here. Let's normalize the, normalize the scale here in the object properties, as you can see. S let's center it also. Okay, it's kind of centered, but it's, it's still small. So here we can, we've got a size X. I'll make it bigger here. So, well, it's, let's use 800, okay. We can kind of guess there is an object here. So for the emitting, I'll use once. If you do this, well, you disappear. It will disappear if, if you are at, at five seconds. Why? Because the particles only live two seconds, so they die here. So let's uh, make them live for the 10 seconds of the whole composition. And as you can see, it begins to lag because every particle is emitted from every face. So it's a little too much for, for us. So let's uh, reduce the bird chance, not to 100, but, but maybe 10, it will be enough. And of course the particles are too big, so let's put one. Okay, now we can see our model and it's already really interesting. Okay, so start, you can see the holes I did here. So if we put a, a camera and a null object to control it, make it 3D. Okay, now we can just check around what's happening. So you've got your 3D model here. It's shaped, shaped by particles. Okay, uh, let's leave it at 45 maybe. Okay. So um, now we have our model, we are in full resolution. So what we want to do now is replace the particles by 3D particles. So for this, what we can do is go to particle shape and use model. Okay, so if you want to use a model as a particle, you click on this model tool and connect it to the particles. Now the model will be emitted from each particle. So the model source, we don't use a file. You can use a file if you want to 
for example, use uh, any 3D model you want, but we'll only use primitive. And so we use cubes, they are still small for the moment. Let's put like four, four, four. And segments, we don't need much. Let's use one, one, one. And bevel segments too, we don't need much, one. Okay, so they are a little bigger. Well, we don't really see uh, if they are 3D or not. So some small thing we can do is like go to the render settings in the Stardust uh, effect and uh, uh, turn on the ambient occlusion. As you can see, now we have some shade between each uh, particle. And this is, uh, we understand also that our model is uh, inverted. So let's g go again to emitter and let's flip the, the, the direction in the object properties. Let's flip the Z axis. Okay, now we have it. So I can maybe just put it on this side like, like the video I did. Okay, now we really can see what's happening here. So our 3D model is mapped by cubes and we have some shade that shows us what's happening here. So here, uh, let's, let's uh, give them some depth. Okay, like uh, 16 or anything. As you can see, it's like, it's like we're extruding the, the model, but we're extruding each uh, uh, particle. And um, it's, uh, what I like about this effect, it's, there's some kind of voxel effect to it. You know, like pixel art, but in 3D. I really like this kind of things. So uh, maybe 20 here. I like round numbers. Um, and then, okay, we have our model. So how can we reveal parts of the model? There's something really nice, that's the field effect. Let's first create the the, the, the layer map. It's, it works like the trap code form layer maps. So this uh, composition, let's call it Stardust and let's create a new one. Uh, maybe 2000 by 1000. Okay, so what happens here? L let's do some examples here. If we have a white solid, uh, let's call it layer map or map, or deform map, anything you want. And let's put it here. We don't need to see it. Okay, so, well, Let's leave the model for the moment and only use the particles. So for the field, uh, you've got many things. You can use a black hole that attracts particles. You can bend objects and stuff. You can even use an object. You can experiment so many things with this. But for the moment, let's use only maps. So maps opens these uh, details. The type of map we'll use is a layer. So the layer is deform map, okay. Nothing happens, that's normal. So what we want to affect is not the opacity, but the size of the particles. And for this, we need to map it through like uh, maybe XZ, I guess. Well, we can all simply try. Well, of course, nothing happens because why? We have a white solid. So if we have another one that's black, so the white reveals and the black hides so if normally we won't see anything yeah okay so if we for example just use 50 percent of the width now we will have a hole as you can see here okay so let's just uh, reduce it to 20 and let's see yes well this is already interesting so here, let's map it not on XZ, but on YZ. So we have it here. Okay. And now we have our reveal. So if we augment, okay. <clears throat> As you can see, if you go like, for example, to 90%, as you can see, we've got some, some problem here. So uh let's you know let's keep it to 100 so that we can uh, just use it and well i think it will depend on your model if you export something big or anything maybe it will work this way 
So let's keep the normal size and what we will do is just zoom in on the model. Minus 600 maybe. Okay. So according to what I said earlier, just keep the normal size and stuff um, so that the map will cover really the whole the whole thing. Okay, so if we just disable it for the moment, just see our model. Okay, so oh, let's get back to the deform map and just see the potential we have here. So, okay, we have turned off like 90% of the things. Of course, we don't want to do this. What I want is some kind of, um, as if it was generated by the computer or anything. So what can we do here? It's use turbulent displace. I wanted to say turbulent noise. Okay. So for the turbulent noise, the fractal noise, uh, we can use blocks just to, we can use one complexity. We don't need much. The other, let's keep it to three. And okay. So if we do this, what, what happens now? Well, let's just bump up the contrast for the moment. So we have white values here. So that will show the model and black values that will hide it. So we've got already a glitchy object model. Okay, but what I want is to have lines here, you know, not just go uh, all the all, all over the place. So for this, I would just use mosaic to reduce the resolution of uh, my, my, my blocks. So if I use this, for example, my, I will have like square things, as you can see here. Let's keep it 45 degrees okay can we have this kind of things so if I want only one line just one vertical block let's bump up the contrast to 500 maybe uh, maybe too much but what I would like to do is uh, have like twin uh, 20 stripes okay so we have our main effect here so let's animate the the bars so let's put time times 100 so it will be animated as you can see here and the other thing I did well we did this but as you can see the blocks are oriented see maybe you see it here or as you can see here they are all oriented toward the center they are not like here they are all going toward one the same direction of course it's an interesting effect but if you want to achieve the same kind of result I did, so let's, uh, yeah, so the particles have a really interesting property that's the rotation property. With the rotation property, you've got something called orient to, and you can orient it to any, anywhere you, wa you want. So the particles can be oriented. So let's, uh, we can, use, well, let's create a, uh, a null object. You, you can use anything you want, but I call this null object look at, make it 3D, and as you can see, it's in the center here. Okay, just let it leave it here and orient, orient particles. So if you tell your particles to look at a null, starting with, well, it's already done, but let's just, well, it takes all the nulls. So if you want to be sure, just name just give him the name of your part uh, of your object so what happens here we can't really see it for the moment so let's oh yeah uh, let's uh, let's connect back the model okay <laughs> this is kind of weird but again it's always interesting it's too big oh yeah because i reduced the size of my model so it's it became really too much well, it's still too much. Let's put it dot four maybe zero dot four and ten. Well, ten seems too much again. Four. Yeah. Again, these are things to experiment. Let's leave them to four. And what's funny is yet yeah, well, why not play with it? Let's just say one and move two hundred pixels in a random fashion. What will happen here is that you will have moving, well, no, quarter resolution is too much, but 
they will be moving and they will follow your null object and well with this we we made the main thing we used a 3d model we mapped we I mean, we mapped it with the 3d shapes well it's only primitives but they do the job we use some kind of scan effect here with a layer map here you can do anything you want with this and we oriented the particles towards some place you know so as you can see here well let's leave it like this you understood that we can move the the the, the object okay so starting from now it's only uh fine tuning and color correction and, and all things like this but starting from here you can do anything you want